So, sorry, but I had to remind myself what I was going to say. But so we all know that in a couple of years, it'll be 30 years since a goofy movie came out. That's right. This spring marks 28 years. In two years, it'll be 30. But when we look back at a goofy movie, knowing that extensively it is based off Goof Troop, basically it's a, I guess you could say an extension of the series that takes place a couple of years later, and does kind of have a lot of uh, questions left unanswered, although recently with the reopening of Mickey's Toontown and certain areas of it, it looks like maybe Disney is starting to embrace its Disney Afternoon legacy because of the fact that there are certain characters now showing up in certain parts of Mickey's Toontown. Mainly when you go into Goofy's, one of Goofy's houses or something like that, you see pictures of, you know, Pete and his family and Goofy and the friends, you know, interacting with other Disney characters. But more specifically, when you look at, you know, some of these pictures, you see Peg and Pistol, two characters that were surprisingly omitted from the movie. And it made a lot of people kind of speculate what, you know, what happened? You know, did they just didn't, did the writers not have time to add them in? Was the script being written before the show came out? This, the reason they were omitted? You know, was the storyline, you know, question, or not storyline, question, but answer, you know, from a continuity standpoint that, you know, Peg just had enough of Pete's BS and decided to divorce him and take Pistol with her? You know, we don't know. We don't know. Like I said, we don't know. But, obviously, again, and as I was mentioning, it looks like Disney is starting to embrace their Disney Afternoon uh, legacy because when you go into these houses, you know, centered center around Goofy, you see not just like Max interacting with, you know, the, 20, the 2017 to 2020s, you know, DuckTales gang, you know, of, of Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby, but you also see, you know, pictures of Pistol hanging out with them. You see pictures of Pete and his family, and that includes Pe Peg and Pistol, you know, there, you know, for everybody to see. You know, so, you know, you see them interacting with the characters and, and everything, which is kind of cool. It's kind of nice to see and all that. You know, you see them interacting with, you know, with the characters and everything. You know, so that's... You know, it's kind of cool to to see and, and and notice, you know, in those pictures. But when it when it comes to a goofy movie, though, you know, to get to the point of the video, there's always been one question that a lot of people probably, you know, are always curious about when it comes to the movie, and that is basically why does Goofy, you know, uh, throughout the film, well, not throughout the film entirely, but through you know, parts of the film. You know, why does, you know, why does Goofy, you know, treat Max like he's younger than what he is? I mean, yes, we get the answer during one of the climactic scenes towards the end and everything. Um, but why, why does he do this? Why does he do this? I mean, he's even done it before this whole situation, before everything took place. It's like, you know, uh, what happened? What occurred? You know, it's like, what happened? What occurred and everything to, you know, to, to make him treat Max this way? Now, some might say that from a logic standpoint that Goofy is a widower. He is a single dad. And that Max is the only connection he has to his now deceased wife. And that is understandable. And because he's probably that only connection... You know, and the only family that he has close to him, except for, you know, his relatives that are, you know, essentially, I guess you could say spread all across the country, all across the world. You know, with, you know, with Max being the only, you know, blood that he has, and like I said, that only connection, he probably doesn't want to lose Max in a similar fashion. Not fatally, but he doesn't want to be left alone. Which is, you know, why, you know, when you look at the film, he caught, he essentially at the beginning of the film, you know, throughout portions of it, he coddles him. He treats him like a little kid. I mean, 
uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We we go to that one scene and when they go to the possum park and everything. And Goofy, when he looks at Max saying, I'm going to take you someplace pretty special, the way he looks at him from a, you know, the way he looks at him from a, a squinting standpoint, you can almost believe, even though they don't show it, even though they don't show it, you can almost believe when he's telling uh, Max, oh, I'm going to take you someplace pretty special, and he's squinting. It's almost like he's imagining, visually in his mind, imagining Max as a little kid, like holding a rattle and, you know, sucking on a, a pacifier and all that, that and, you know, sitting in a car seat. That's almost like what you can almost feel he's visualizing Max as, you know, not as the teenage kid he is now, not someone that's going to be a sophomore in high school and all that. But basically someone that's still like one or two years old, maybe even a few months. Uh, well, not a few months essentially, but you get the idea. He still views him in that in, in that category, in that level. And this gets ex- accentuated even more so in the sequel that takes place five years later. You know, where Max goes off to college and... You know, Goofy has all this reluctancy of, you know, letting him go and everything. And he just, you know, just wants to be with him. And again, we do get the answer in the first film when Max tells him he's grown up. Oh, he's growing up. He's got his own life now. And Max, and not Max, but Goofy says he knows. He acknowledges that and he wants to be part of it. When Goofy says he wants to be part of that, he's basically telling Max, look, you know, uh, he's he, well. He doesn't. Well, he basically tells him the line we hear him say that no matter how big you get, you'll always be my son, which is true in real life. It's like no matter how big you get, how old you get, you're always going to be a parent's child. You're always going to be a parent's kid. You know, in my case with my my mom and dad, I'm always going to be their baby. I'm always going to be the the third and final child. That I'm always going to be their baby, if you will. Um, but. You know, basically, Goofy delivering that line saying, you know, you know, no matter how big you get, you'll always be my son. But, you know, what he says before that, you know, really kind of makes you understand that he, you know, he knows, he acknowledges everything going on with Mac growing up and, every, and all that. And he also acknowledges that as time goes on, Max is going to get older and want to do his own things and all that. But Goofy doesn't want, but the main thing is Goofy doesn't want him to forget, get the connection, doesn't want to have Max forget about their connection. And he wants him to always be there for him. He always wants to be part of what Max does, you know, which again, you know, explains why he coddles him. You know, the way he does, you know, explains why he treats him like a little kid and all that, you know, instead of his age, you know, let him, and letting him have his independence and everything. I mean, when Max tries to explain that he has a party to go to, basically, a, a, you know, a, um, I guess you could say after, I wouldn't say after school, but, you know, um, summer break party, basically, and, you know, essentially an after school party to celebrate summer vacation. You know, what, what does Max say? I mean, not Max, but what does Goofy say? He says, oh, you'll have plenty of time for the parties when you're older, son. He talks to him like that by almost kind of saying, oh, you know, you're not old enough yet for a party, but you, when you get older, you'll have plenty of time for that in the future. Da, 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 da. Like, he's not realizing Max is saying, hey, you know, I, you know, I got to go to this party. And when he does try to explain that, you know, there's this girl and everything that he's met, Goofy doesn't hear that. Goofy doesn't hear that or acknowledge that. He still views Max as, you know, a little kid. He really does. And because he still views him like that, he doesn't think Max would be capable of getting in trouble. He doesn't think Max would be capable of lying to him, you know, and everything and hiding stuff from him. But yet he finds out throughout this film that, yeah, Max is capable of doing that because Max is doing that from a rebellious standpoint because he wants his independence. It's like he still loves his father. He'll still want to hang with his father. But he wants his dad to understand, look, I have other things I want to do in my life. And you have to let me do them. You know, you have to let me do them so that I can grow. 
so I can be my own person. I can be my own man. You know that. And yet you notice with Goofy, like I said, he understands that. He's willing to accept that. But there's a part of him that also doesn't want to let Max go because he's that last remaining piece that he has of potentially his wife, which is why he's reluctant. Which is why when Max goes to college in the second film, it's hard for him because now he's going to be on his own again. He doesn't have anybody uh, to fill that void. You know, that is until later on when he meets Sylvia. But like I said, it's when you when you look at the Max Goofy relationship, you know, you know, yes, they do have an understanding of where each other are coming from. You know, even when Max finally, when they finally get a chance after that whole climactic ending, or one of the climactic endings uh, in the film, if you will, the first climactic one and everything with the car and everything before the waterfall, when they finally have a chance to just bond and everything, have that little song of, and, and sing that song of nobody else but you, but then also have that moment to, you know, to bond and everything. And Max kind of explains, you know, to his dad, hey, this is why I lied to you. This is why I did what I did. This is why I got in trouble. Because I want to impress this girl. And, you know, he basically for him to explain that, yeah, the reason I did what I did, the reason I changed the map uh, from going to Lake Destiny to going to Los Angeles and everything for the concert is because I don't want to lose this girl. I don't want to lose this opportunity. And, you know, for Goofy to understand, like, oh, now I get it. You know, you're in love. You know, and that, and for Goofy to admit that, you know, you know, for Goofy to admit that he, you know, by, you know, having Max admit this to him, you know, about being in love and everything with Roxanne and doing what he had to do, you know, to impress her, you know, Goofy admitting that, you know, Max, not only is Max growing up, but because he's growing up so fast, he must have missed it. Because in a way, when you look at that one, you hear that one moment where he's like, gosh, you're really growing up. It happened so fast, I guess I kind of missed it. When he says that line, that's his way of saying, or admitting to me, in my opinion, he's admitting that not only has his son grown up to be, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a very established, you know, independent young man. But he's done it in a way that because his father would always coddle him, you know, and always still look at him as a young kid, that he didn't acknowledge, oh, my son's growing up. This is why he's doing this. This is why he's doing that. This is why he talks this way or listens to, the mu listens to this kind of music. Because, you know, he basically by him admitting that... He, you know, he kind of missed, you know, the fact that his son was growing up, you know, up so fast that, you know, he's admitting that he didn't catch on to why Max would do certain things, listen to certain stuff, you know, read certain books, you know, say certain slangs and all that. And it's all because of the fact that he was getting older, but Goofy didn't want to accept it. He didn't want to accept it until finally Max had to basically say, look, you know, I'm not your little boy anymore. I've grown up. I have my own life now. And for him to say that and Goofy to admit, yes, I know, but I want to be part of it. In other words, him saying, I want to be part of it. I don't want you to forget who I am. I don't want to lose you like basically I lost your mother. Now, we don't hear that in the film, but you get that sense and feeling. You get that sense and feeling that that's why Goofy acted the way he did, why he coddled Max so much, you know, why he, you know, as he admits, you know, you know, he missed out on Max, even though he was there, he missed out, missed out on the fact that Max was growing up uh, in the manner that he was. Uh, it's because of the fact that he was coddling him. And again, we see an extension of that in the sequel, but what saves that is that Goofy meets up with somebody that gets him, that understands him, has the same likes that he has. You know, and is willing to help him accept the fact that, hey, your son's growing up. You need to let him be his own person, and you need to find your own place again. You need to find, you know, yourself again. And Sylvia in the second film helps him do that. But, yeah, looking back at the movie almost 30 years later, and, you know, we're always wondering why Goofy treated Max the way he did, you know, coddling him, treating him like a little baby and, and all that. Not, you know, tr not treating him the way he should have been treated to have a full understanding. 
You know, again, I think it has to do a lot more with you know, the fact that Goofy's a widower and, you know, he doesn't have a wife or a mother to take care of Max or a wife, you know, or a mother to, you know, open Goofy's eyes and make him realize, hey, your son's, our son's growing up. You can't coddle him anymore. You've got to let him be himself. So, so yeah, to me, I think, I think honestly that's why he treats Max the way he does because even though they don't explain it in the movie, even though they kind of hint at it in the series, it's the fact that Goofy, you know, Max, you know, Goofy's a widower. He doesn't have a wife, you know, anymore or a mother to help take care of Max and kind of balance things out. And because Max is that last connecting, you know, uh, piece, you know, to her, to his wife, you know, which, you know, it's the reason. You know, it's the reason why he's coddling him and everything. He doesn't want to let him go until he finally has to accept that, yeah, I have to, I have to let my son be himself. I have to let him grow. I have to stop treating him like a little baby and everything for him to have an opportunity in the world. But that's just how I see it. What do you guys think? I mean, again, there are plenty of moments in both films and everything that kind of show this. Like I said, you know, when they go to the possum park, you know, he squints his eyes at Max. And almost you can believe that he's looking at Max as a little kid, you know, and not, you know, and not a, you know, a grown up, if you will, not a 15 year old, 16 year old rebellious teenager. I mean. I mean, the fact that he basically doing, before they sing the Open Road song, he puts in an 8-track tape, and it has the kitty song, the preschooler song, High Hopes. And Max has to change it to rock and everything. And you're wondering, why would Goofy put that on, knowing his son is not into, his son is way beyond that kind of music? It's because, again, you add it to what happens moments later with the Possum Park and arriving there, and you get the idea. The fact that he still views Max as a little kid. But, but yeah, I think that's why he coddles him. Because, you know, that's why he coddles him and treats him the way he does before he finally, you know, acknowledges, you know, you know, the reality and accepts, you know, the fact that Max has grown up. He is his own independent, he is his own independent person. He can make his own decisions, you know, without the help of his father. You know, this is why I think he coddles him because he still views him as a little kid and that one last connection to potentially, you know, his deceased wife. You know, that's the way I look at it. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments as well as in the live chat during the premiere. Like the video. You will get an audio podcast version of this at BW Rosses. Discussions on your audio podcast platforms except for Pandora. Also, guys, check me out. Uh, check me out basically at Vimo at BW Roses for content you can't get anywhere else here on YouTube, especially for certain reasons. Also, check me out at divanart.com, says BVW1979. Support me at Venmo at Brian Walmer 2 and at Cash App at BW Roses98. Also, patreon.com, says BW Roses with a $1, $3 tier. Click, and also, if you're listening and watching on YouTube, click on the upper left hand corner. Uh, to check out my Teespring store for merchandise you can't get anywhere else. But guys, give me your thoughts. What do you, what are your thoughts on what I had to say here? You know, do you agree with it in some some capacity? Let me know. And until next time, I'll talk to y'all later.